Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 side scroller series. In today's video we are going to be continuing on with the main menu and we are going to be showing you guys how you can set up this simple level select screen. So if you take a quick look at my screen here you can see I've got a couple of different buttons here, one for level 1, one for level 2 and one for level 3. What we're going to be doing is giving you guys the ability to you know, send the player to a different level when they press each one of these different buttons. Now, now if you guys are designing the game yourself, you know you're going to take it one step further on top of me, you can always change the images, you can always change the buttons, and most importantly you can set your own levels to this. As of right now, for this series we only have one level, so I'm just going to be creating two extra levels that are completely blank and maybe just add a bit of text in there or something so you know which one is which. Um, but for you guys, if you do want to add extra levels, you want to design them yourself, you just change the level name, it's really simple, but more on to that later on in the video. Anyways, so first things first, we need to go ahead and get this out of Photoshop and we need to get it into Unreal Engine. Once again, if you haven't got the latest version of the Photoshop file for the main menu, you can download it all in the download link in the description and there's a couple of files in there that you need as well, the PNG images for each one of these buttons. So let's open up the Unreal Engine and go into the content browser. In here we need to go ahead and chuck those images into our content browser. So once again, Go to your side scroller folder. For me, that is somewhere. Okay, so Virtus Education side scroller. And the images that you're after is level 1, level 2, level 3, and then there is also the return button as well. Just select those in your file browser and then just drag it in to your content browser just like that, and that is perfect. So um, so the next thing that we need to do now then is we actually need to go ahead and open up our main menu screen blueprint again. So go ahead and find it in your content browser and then we've just got to add in all of these additional buttons and then set up some visibility and a few other things. So open up main menu screen, give it a couple of seconds to load up. One thing that I do want to do before we go any further is I want to anchor all of these buttons here to the center as it did look a little bit odd when I tried it out. And from here, we've now got to go ahead and add in the extra buttons. So we've got three level select buttons, so one, two, and three. And then we've also got the return to menu button, which is just beneath it. So if you just take a look at this image, you can see exactly what we're trying to create. So we've got level one, level two, level three, and then this return button's going to take you back to the normal main menu. So let's go ahead and dive back in here, and we need to set up all of the styling now. So first things first, we need to set the normal. So starting off with the first button, set the texture to level one, set the margin to zero, and just do the same thing. And I'll just go through and do the same thing for all of these for level two as well. Set the margin down to zero, and then do the same thing for the third one as well. It is quite a lengthy process if you do have quite a lot of images in your menu. And then the last one is gonna be return button just here making sure that we set that margin down to zero and that is perfect so now all we've got to do is just go through these and make sure they're the right size now don't worry about them being on top of everything else at the moment that's not too much of an issue just go ahead and work on your placement so that looks about the right size for the level one uh, for you know one of these little things that's cool so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the X and the Y copy and paste the values into the other one so they're all the same size. So starting with the X, I'm going to copy that, that's 218, 218, and then 218 on this one. We've made them wide enough now, all we've got to do is set the Y, which is the height, that's 188, so copy that, and then just paste it in here, and then paste it in there as well, just Control c Control v to paste that all in. Once we've done that, just place them in your scene, nice and easy, just like that, looking good. That is great, and now also we need to set up the return to menu button, so we're just going to drag that out and place it just over here. So, there's a lot of script that we need to do to actually make it flick between the two screens. We've got to go ahead and set up some toggle visibility stuff, um, but before I do that, I'm just going to set up the functionality for these buttons real quick. So, the way that we're going to do this is we're pretty much just going to tell it to, you know, when you click the button, you're going to tell it to fire off a command, and that command is just going to be telling it to open a level. 
So if we create an unclicked event for the first one, all we've got to do from here is drag this out and tell it to open level. And then from here, you just put in the level name. So for me, the first level is simply called side scroll or example map. So what you could do is just rename it and just tell it level one, level two, and so on and so forth. I'm just going to go ahead and add this in for now. Side scroller example map. Cool. And now we've just got to go through and do the same thing with the rest of these now. So open up our design view, get the second image, and just go ahead and do the same thing. So on clicked event, just beneath it, open level, do the same thing for the third one, go into your design view, and just create that on clicked event. Now we're going to create an extra couple of levels in a moment so that we can test this out. But for now, I'm just going to add all of this stuff in here, open level, and that is perfect. It's not going to do anything for now, as so I haven't actually put any text in there, but that is going to be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and compile this, and now if we go into the design view, um, this is where it's going to get a little bit complicated. Actually, before I do go ahead and set up the switching, I'm going to make sure we can actually get all of this displayed on the screen. Before I do that, I'm going to quickly set the anchor points for all of these buttons to the center. One more, and there you go, and also this button here. So what we got to do now is we've actually got to open up our main menu level so that we can get this shown on the screen. So you should have a main menu level already if you've been watching this video. I've just got a you know a new level called main menu level and it's completely blank. If you don't have this already, just go to file, new, create a new level and just name it this. So I'm going to open this up making sure that I save everything that I've just done. And like I said, it's completely blank at the moment. Um, it's got a couple of things displayed on the screen, but we'll take care of that later on in the uh, series. So what we've got to do from here, because I only want the main menu to display when we're in the main menu level, I'm going to open up a level blueprint. And then from here, from the begin play, I'm just going to tell it to create a widget. And the widget that I want it to create is going to be the main menu screen. Once we've done that, obviously we need to add it to the viewport and that will get it uh, shown on the player screen. If we go ahead and compile this now, press play, you can now see that we've got our menu, but the trouble is at the moment, every single item is displayed on the player screen. We don't want that. We've got to tell it to toggle the visibility of some items on and off. It's a long process, but let's get into it and let's get started. So I'm going to press stop real quick. And once again, I'm going to open up the main menu screen. And with these four buttons here, level one, level two, level three, and the return button, I'm gonna set the default visibility on those to, you know, hidden. So visibility, hidden, that's one, two, three, and one last one over here. And then if we go ahead and compile this, close it let's press play and now you can see we've got just the buttons that we want and that is perfect none of them actually have any functionality at the moment but that's not too important we're going to be adding in that all of that stuff in the next video so let's get it flicking between this uh, between these screens now so what we need to do we need to open it up and with the level select button hidden just behind level two here we need to go down and we need to create an on clicked event from this on clicked event, we need to toggle the visibility of some of our items. So what we've got to do is we've got a reference to all the ones that we want to turn on. So that is going to be these items here. I'm going to name these just to make it a little bit easier. So level one, level two, just change the name and the details panel over here. And then lastly, we've also got level three over here. Just change this, the name of that to level three. If we go back into our graph now, we can then proceed to drag all of this in. So get the references. And there you are. So if we drag one of these out, so let's say level one, we can just type in toggle visibility or if we type in visibility, it's set visibility. And then we want to set this to visible. And then with the target, make sure you hook up level two and level three as well. And we've also got to get the return button in there as well. So go into your design view and grab that return button and name this return BTN. Go to your graph. And from this little graph, what we've got to do is just grab return button, drag this in. 
and then we're just going to set get hook this up just like that into the target and that is perfect and that should get all the things displayed on the screen that we need to so if we press compile play press level select you can now see it's popping up on top of the screen however the issue is we've still got the stuff in the background so we need to make sure we get rid of that the way we're going to get rid of it is the same as the way that we put the new stuff on go into the graph view from here we're going to get the set visibility again we're going to hook this up just like that and this time we're just going to be hiding the objects that we've already got on the screen so those objects are going to be start you know get started um, level select and exit game so what we've got to do is grab exit game button get a reference to that get started button get a reference to that and also our level select button once again just hook these up into the target just like that and for invisibility just make sure that's set to hidden if we go ahead and press compile now and then if we press play you can see we can go through these and it's fine level select it gets rid of the other stuff and that is perfect um, the return button doesn't work at the moment that's fine we'll set up the functionality for that in a second it's basically just the opposite of what we've just done now but if we were to press the level one button it's going to freeze for a couple of seconds but after that it's actually going to load up the game and that is exactly what we want it to do so let's go ahead and set up that return button so go into your design view grab the return button scroll all the way down and go to on clicked from here we are pretty much going to copy this and then we're going to paste it and then just drag it down here and then we're just going to hook it up just like that because we're doing the opposite what we're going to do is we're just going to change the visible to the hidden and the hidden to visible and that will just pretty much reverse exactly what we've just done so if we press play level select return level select and it's just going backwards and forwards and that is exactly how we want it and we've got our level selection if you guys do want to add in your additional levels just go ahead and add in the file names um, just like I showed you earlier so if we come in here set your file names up in here it's really really simple to do so one last thing I do want to do before I go ahead and end off the video is I'm just going to quickly set the styling on the hover effects for these buttons as it does look a little bit odd at the moment. So for hovered, once again we're just going to go through and we're going to set level 1, margin down to 0, and then we're going to do the same thing for this one, level 2, margin down to 0, and then level 3, margin down to 0, and we're going to set this to level 3 and then for this one same thing again it's return and then margin down to 0 if you remember last time what we did with these buttons is we actually added a slight red tint you guys can go ahead and do the same thing so just add in a little bit of red here and you can see the little preview and that's looking good same thing for all of these a little bit of red on there a little bit of red on this one as well not too much we don't want to make it look too fake and then also for the return button as well nice and easy so what I want you guys to do is just go through and do the same thing on the pressed here as well so it doesn't look gray when you click it um, but other than that it should be all good for now if we go ahead and press play take one last look at our little menu here it's looking quite nice anyway guys i'm going to end off the video here we've done quite a lot in today's video once again thanks for watching make sure you stay awesome keep creating i will see you in the next video where we finish off the menu your boy vertus signing out